Acts 10, we're still there, right? Look at verse number um, 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Uh, chapter 13, we're going to read chapter 13. We're almost done, so just bear with me. We're almost done. Acts chapter 13, verse number 29. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are witnesses unto the people. Again, referencing the fact that he was resurrected and that people had seen him and talked with him. They are witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again. God made a promise unto our fathers, unto our ancestors. A promise of a Christ, promise of a Savior, promise of a resurrected Christ. Hey, God fulfilled that. Yeah. We're witnesses of that. We saw that. God hath fulfilled the same unto us, our children, that he hath raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, just showing you, this day have I begotten thee, this is not talking about the birth of Christ. This is talking about his resurrection. Because that's what, that's what they're, he's literally saying. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That's his being begotten of the dead. Verse 34, And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses." Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. There's a lot of people that still don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is an important event. The resurrection is an event that even the people in charge, you know, Pilate was told, hey, this deceiver said when he was still alive that he was going to rise again after three days. The unsaved folk knew that he prophesied his own resurrection. And just so that there would be no doubt on the resurrection, this happened where he says, okay, we'll make it sure. They've set soldiers, a multitude, a host of soldiers at the tomb just to make sure no one's going to come and, and try to fake the resurrection, right? Come and steal the body of Jesus. They rolled a great stone over it just to make sure that it would be sealed up and that no one would have access to it. And you've got all these soldiers standing guard. Yet the tomb was still empty. No one came and opened it up. The only people that opened up were the angels that came and opened up the tomb and it was already empty. There's already nobody there. So when, when the people knew about that, because the, the soldiers saw the angels and saw it opened up and they were afraid. But they were told to lie about it and just say, oh, they fell asleep. Yeah, all the soldiers all were asleep all at the same time and no one heard the stone roll away from the mouth. No one heard any of that, right? They lied. Now some people will want to believe that fable, but... It's obviously not true. It doesn't even make any sense that that would happen. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, please. We see over and over and over again, and I was showing you all these verses because it's important that they were witnesses of the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection of Christ. The bodily resurrection. We saw him. We handled him. We ate with him. We spake with him. We were with him. We were there. He rose again from the dead. Why is that so important? Why is the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ so important? 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to pick up in verse number 12. The Bible says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? He was talking to some people saying, you know, some people didn't even believe in a resurrection of the dead. He's saying, but we're preaching that Christ rose from the dead. How can you even say that there's no resurrection? Verse 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? So if there, if there is no resurrection, if people don't, aren't going to resurrect from the grave, he says, then Christ isn't risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. Anyone who believes in a Savior that's not resurrected, that's not alive, it's worthless. It's meaningless to just believe in someone that's just long gone and dead. They can't do anything for you anymore. He's saying, whatever your faith is in that, then that's just meaningless. It's vain. That's not going to help you. 